Spotlight Finance, the world of financial freedom. Good morning. We have Monday, March 21. We are opening the week in the markets. So this week most likely will still be volatile, though probably less than last week when we awaited the FOMC decision. Today we are already quite clear about the direction of monetary policy and the predictions about the future interest rates. With the reservation, of course, that this is not a rigid forecast that will not be changed in the future when the situation develops, of course. However, during the press conference, Jerome Powell himself, when asked by one of the journalists about the impact of the interest rates hike on inflation, was not able to clearly answer, explaining that the effects will have to be weighted and that it should help to some extent without explaining too much of the details. Though throughout the conference, he emphasized that the main reasons for this were broken supply chains and the prices of energy materials. Then a question about the risk of recession, he replied that so far there was no indication of it. He spoke of a strong labor market and other indicators suggesting a stable economic development. So he kind of confirmed everything that we have been talking about uh, for a long time on this channel, that the hikes themselves are rather something to imitate that the Fed has any impact on the markets and that so far the numbers are good and that there is no fear of recession. So uh, this week the markets will still live uh, with the events in Ukraine. We are constantly receiving contradictory information about the potential progress in negotiations and then the denial of these reports. So the commodity and precious metals markets, mainly of course oil and gold, will probably still be very volatile. In terms of the macro calendar, it may look less interesting than it looks at first glance. Today we have Powell's speech, but this is an annual conference in Washington and the topic will be a general assessment of the current economic situation. So if it is a looser format and in addition, we heard everything we need last week. And since then, not much time has passed. No major data also was published during this couple days. We may have received some hints, although I would not expect any fireworks. So then also Mrs. Lagarde's speeches will not bring anything new to the table, I think. So we can turn on in the background and listen to this in the meantime. Tuesday will be a bit calmer, with a few speeches by representatives of central banks from the US, Great Britain and Switzerland, for example. Wednesday promises to be much better. We have UK inflation figures, Bank of England Governor Bailey's speech and oil inventories. Wednesday's speech by Powell will be on the crypto market. Topics related to the likely cryptocurrency of the central banks will be discussed. So how it should be resolved and whether it makes any sense at all. So we can turn it on in the background again. So uh, Thursday is a bit more interesting. SNB, Swiss National Bank, will announce interest rate decision along with their forecast. Then we will get data on preliminary manufacturing PMIs from Germany and Great Britain and the entire Eurozone. At 11 o'clock Central European time is planned a meeting of EU leaders during which talks will be held on, among others, Ukraine's accession to the EU. Although I think that is unlikely given not even the lack of will on the part of the West countries, i.e. France, Germany and the Netherlands. But the facts, however, they call to suspend this process is there is a war in this country at the moment and the future is unclear and along with the EU membership uh, there are some responsibilities so it, it makes sense uh, to wait with that decision. On Thursday several members of the Fed will also have their speeches including Bostic and Waller and here you can pay attention to Mr. W Mr. Waller because he strongly opted for faster and more decisive uh, rate increase. So as you can see in general he and Bullard, they were voted through and the subject of the statement will be the real estate market, but it is still worth paying attention to whether it will sometimes refer to much, uh, suffer too much to the monetary policy of the Fed and whether it will spread some panic about further increases on the market. So later retail sales from the UK on Friday and IFO and business climate from Germany and several speeches by the Fed members, including Weller again. 
Okay, so let's move on to the charts now and uh, we will see that Euro USD can go higher from here until 161.8 feeble level and one to one formation will fulfill. Oil needs to be weighted out on those levels at 50 and 61.8 feeble. We need to see what the price will do over there and when it break to the upside, then we need to look for longs. When it will stay at those levels, I would loom for reversal confirmation and set to some shorts. At the end, gold, the overbalance formation was broken and most likely we will see continuation of this retracement. We broke through this support and I would look for targets at 127 and 161 feeble levels from the local measurement. Okay, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time guys. Bye bye.